This is the second part of a two-part video. You can find the other one on my playlist. As you probably guessed, bubbles and resin do not get along well. That's why you put it in a pressure pot to compress those bubbles so they can't be seen by the human eye. I'm cleaning up the resin with a chisel and a card scraper here to try to give it level with the sides of the box. I used the offcuts from the original block of wood I cut the box out of to act as a cradle which prevents the bandsaw blade from catching the box and pushing down with great force. Don't ask me how I know this. I'm measuring out what's going to be the drawer for the box using the same compass trick as before. You may have guessed by now that I wasn't supposed to cut off the front face of the box yet. Oh well, nothing a little carpet tape can't fix. Two tricks to a good bandsaw box. One, Make the entry cut so it follows the path of the grain pattern. Two, make sure that the cut is elongated so there's more surface area to glue back up together. Both of these will help you disguise the cut in the long run so that people don't realize how you made it. Bandsaw boxes are sort of like that trick where you make two mirrors face each other to get a progressively smaller image. The core you cut out actually serves as the drawer for the box. And as you cut out that drawer, you get a smaller core, which you could take and make another bandsaw box with. Insert obligatory joke about clamps here. I use a thin piece of wood with glue on it to get in between the cut. Rubber bands are great for clamping small, oddly shaped projects. I add a few smaller clamps to pinch the cut as well. I bake the box back for about six hours to dry it out. To my surprise, the alumilite detached from the wood. Maybe it was the CA glue that failed here. In case you're wondering, that stuff is called cactus juice. And no, it's not some new age health fad. It's a resin used to stabilize wood. You can find the stuff on Text Turnworks, a website run by Curtis Seebeck. After you bake the moisture out of the wood, you place it in a vacuum chamber, like I'm doing here. This allows the wood to draw in the resin and impregnate all its pores. The resin itself is heat activated, so you can reuse that excess later. I left the resin under vacuum for about two and a half hours. Then I released the vacuum and let the wood soak for another 24 hours. If you're going to do this at home, get a toaster oven and do it in your garage. It'll make your kitchen smell weird. Also, get a secondary thermometer. The thermometer on this oven was off by 80 degrees. I'm using the compass to evenly space the holes for the dowels that are going to go into the legs. Using my drill press, I make piled holes for the dowels. With the pilot holes as a guide, I make the 5 16 inch hole that matches my dowel size using my hand drill. This is where the project takes a turn for the worse. The legs are much too thin and fragile for the size of dowel I was using, and I end up breaking three out of four of them. I reattach them with CA glue, but they look like the poor armadillo has a broken leg. In addition, 
I have very small tolerances for getting the doll through the body of the box properly. And of course, I end up breaking a few through the sidewall. So that's why I decided to make my bad problem even worse and dump white resin on the top of the box to cover up the exposed dowels. But this is a problem that more resin does not fix. My wife describes it as if a school kid had dumped paste on the project. As I lie awake and think where my bandsaw box life went wrong, I came up with another way to make this project. And now it doesn't involve getting a CNC machine. The tolerances would be much higher, meaning a much thicker box body and legs, so the dolls would be easier to place and would not split the wood. Secondly, I would shape the outside of the box on a lathe. I would laminate wood together as before and shape a huge circle, probably 14 to 15 inches in diameter. I would take the circular stock and cut out sections in the middle. Then I'd be left with two arched half circle shapes. I would make the legs using segmented pieces, which I think would be really neat. These legs would be wider as well, perhaps two inches. This way the dolls won't cause them to split so easily. They too would start out circular, but then I would cut them into sections later. I bet that matching a perfectly circular inside and outside curve on a lathe would be much easier. Thanks for watching guys. Also don't forget to subscribe and check out my Etsy site.